Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Books Beside My Bed video for you where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. This is my reading week from the 28th of May until the 2nd of June and how on earth are we even in June at the moment? I don't know, but I read a few things this week that I am really excited to share with you. We're going to start off with two review copies that I received from Alan and Unwin, who are a publisher here in Australia. The first one is the fifth book in the e-boy series by Arne Doe. This is an ongoing middle grade serial story that has a lot of popularity. Arne Doe writes a lot of series, you guys have heard me talk about a lot of them. I recently had to do a massive book order for school and the number of Ando books that I had to order multiple copies of and box sets of and whatnot was honestly mind-boggling and I'm pretty sure that retailer things are nuts but Ando is incredibly popular with kids because they're very quick easy to read they have lots of illustrations through them and of course they leave off on cliffhangers so you have to read the next story. Thankfully he's quite prolific and they come out very often. In this particular story Ethan who is e-boy and has the ability to control technology is working with his partners Penny and Gemini who is an android-like character to search for the key behind superhuman strength which happens to be these mysterious crystal-like things that are hidden deep beneath the ocean. There are threads of Atlantis woven into this particular story. It is very action-packed and they are constantly trying to stay one step ahead of their enemies. So this is a very entertaining serial. I know that middle grade readers will really enjoy it and I'm donating a lot of the Ando books I have to classroom libraries at school so I have to work out who's getting this copy. <laughs> and then there was my most anticipated young adult release of the year and that is Some Shall Break by Ellie Marnie. This is a YA thriller story. It is set in I think the 1980s for memory and it follows a young FBI agent, a consultant for the FBI, the sister of a serial killer, and that same serial killer who is on death row. So in this one Emma Lewis is recalled to the FBI when a new serial killer comes on the scene who has the same MO as the man who had previously kidnapped and kept her hostage. And she has intimate knowledge sort of of the way that he killed. And what's happening now is very very similar but with slight differences that Emma is able to pick up. Travis is working the case alongside Kristen Goodmanson, who is the sister of Simon Goodmanson, a serial killer who is on death row. All of these characters are in their late teens, early 20s. Simon is delightfully creepy and they have to go to him for help to try and work out a bit of their new serial killer's psyche. And the whole time I was just waiting to see what kind of scene Simon was going to orchestrate from behind bars and it didn't disappoint. I had an absolute blast reading this. I really do like these characters and there is enough left hanging at the end for the hope that there might be another book featuring all of these characters. I also really appreciated that Emma as a character has been through something incredibly traumatic prior to the start of the series. She's also been through something traumatic while working with the FBI in the first book and coming back onto this case keeps all of that trauma at the surface and so she is constantly dealing with it and Travis working as her partner has to learn how he can best be there for her and to also acknowledge that he can't fix the situation. So like in terms of character development it's great and I think it's just really deftly handled by Ellie Marnie. So. I'm very excited that this came out. All right then moving on to other titles that I read this week. I read Light Up the Lamp by Kit Oliver. This is an MM hockey romance. I actually read this while going to my first hockey game here in Australia so that was quite fun. This one is a second chance romance between hockey royalty Gil who comes from a family of hockey players. His dad was a very famous player who turned, who's become a very well-known coach and one of his brothers is also um, coming up in the NHL. When Gil is traded to one of the worst teams in the NHL he gets really huffy about it, so does his dad, and they're constantly trying to find a way to 
get him out of this contract. When he gets there, he finds out that his former boyfriend, Sebastian, who they had broken up and have not kept in contact with for a few years, is now one of the assistant coaches there. And Gil is still in love with Sebastian. He's never really gotten over him. But between Gil essentially being a very spoiled <laughs> character who's been raised that way, his father has made him that way. And in that sense, I had a bit of sympathy because Gil has not been able to see past the toxicity of his father's behavior, but it constantly gets in the way of the relationship. And so this was one of those books where I felt very conflicted about because I feel like we were probably trying to do too much in the story. So the romance felt a little bit rushed because we were trying to deal with Gil's behavior and the way that he has to grow as a person. And he has to do an incredible amount of growing. And I don't know if we quite got there in that story. So great concept. I like seeing those stories where characters have to realize that their pattern of behavior is not okay and they have to grow and learn and change. It's kind of hard to put into words because it was probably a three star-ish type read for me because I just would have liked a little bit more depth in all of the storylines and possibly for Gil to grow up a little bit sooner because he's an adult. Then I read Hitting the Wall by Kate C. Wells. This one is a book that Heather from Here Booktubes has been asking me to read for a very long time. So I finally did read it and I had a great time. This is a book that I feel like you have to go into knowing all of the content warnings well in advance because the things that happen from page one are quite confronting. This is the story of Shay who at the very, very beginning of the book, so prologue set up, she's 17 years old, she's pregnant and she's run out of town by the father and the uncle of the hero of the story and the town sheriff because the guy that she slept with was 24 years old and so they are very determined to keep him out of trouble and so without telling him he Callum does not know that she's pregnant he hasn't seen her since they slept together and he's stopped answering her calls but these older men run her out of town and she is basically left to fend for herself to have her daughter and raise her and she does an incredible job. Shay is one of my favorite heroines that I've read this year. So then we jump forward six years. Her daughter Mia is autistic and she finds herself having to return to Stonecut County where she was run out from. And that's when Callum sees her walking along the road with a kid. And he hasn't seen her in six years, has, has barely even thought of her because he didn't, he's been kept in the dark about this whole thing. And he sees her walking beside the road. He works for the sheriff's department. When he gets out of the car and he looks at the kid, she looks exactly like his younger sister. And he realizes straight away that she is his. And then he has to process everything. And Shay is obviously pissed off and she doesn't want a bar of dealing with him, but her living circumstances aren't ideal. And Callum eventually convinces her to stay with him because he's got air, like his place has air conditioning. She's safe. He won't push her, but he, he wants to know that his daughter is safe and Shay can't really argue with that. And then what follows is those same people who ran her out of town trying to manipulate the situation in their favor because Callum comes from town royalty. In particular, his uncle is someone I would really like to get my hands on and, and say some very strong words to. And Again, like I talked about earlier, I love seeing character growth and I think we get that from Callum. Callum has missed out on so much of Mia's life and Shay has had to deal with a lot and had to learn how to parent Mia on basically on her own. And she is her first priority and she is working through whether or not she wants to even be with Callum or whether she wants to keep herself and Mia protected because she doesn't know the outcome of being involved with Callum's family. And what I really liked particularly is that Callum knows that he has a daughter and that he's got Shay and Mia staying with him. He sees how uncomfortable she is around his family. And he, do he doesn't quite understand the extent to what his family went to or who was involved or and, and whatnot. But Shay basically says, I don't want to see your family. I don't want, I don't want them to meet Mia. I don't want them to do any of this. And he respects that and he keeps them away. And I will point out that it's not all of his family that are like that. Many of them had no idea what was going on. I think this is one of the books you have to you go into knowing that there is some extreme patriarchal BS. Otherwise, you will be furious from page one. I remember messaging Heather, who's read this book many times, just going, I'm not okay with what's going on. But Kate C. Wells just did it so well. By the time we got to the end, I was just 
all in for these characters. All right, I have 14 minutes of footage and I've only talked about four books, so we gotta keep moving. So I also read Leave No Trace by Sammy C and Michelle Frost. This is book two in the Elite novella series. This is a shared universe book series about, well, it seems to be about assassins. So we'll just go with that. Uh, it is an MM romantic suspense novella. We have Trace who needs to hire a hitman because one of his neighbors is being assaulted by her boyfriend and he wants to do something about it. And so he ends up finding out about Cole, who he meets at the underground, very exclusive bar that is part of this series. And Cole is deeply troubled <laughs> by Trace's lack of self-preservation because Trace literally tracks Cole on one of his assassination jobs. <laughs> so Trace really doesn't have that, that sense of self-preservation. Self this is a bit of an age gap. There is daddy kink in here. It's very short to the point, very insta lusty and like just one of those reads that you can pick up and read in about an hour and a half. I also read Team Players by Deanna Gray, which is book two in the Mendel Hawks series. I loved this one. It is a black love college hockey romance. The heroine in the story is bisexual and both the hero and the heroine in the story are captains of their respective men's and women's hockey teams. So you have Samson who is a renowned playboy and Adarin who is addicted to commitment. And they end up starting this bet or competition with one another where they challenge each other to be the opposite of what they are. So Samson has to try and commit to one person and Adarin is going to try sleeping around and have a no strings attached dating situation. And they're both set up rewards for each other if they succeed. And as they go through this process, they actually become quite good friends. And we see the disparity between the way that the men's hockey team and the women's hockey team is treated in terms of funding and attendance and equipment. And Samson also becomes more aware of that because it's generally known that the women's hockey team will always attend the men's, te men's team's games and be their cheerleaders, but the men's team doesn't do that in reverse. The other thing that has been happening in this series, because the first book, Sunny Disposition, set this up, is that we know that there is something going on with the athletic director for the college, and it has to do with gambling and players being benched during particular games. And that thread continues in this story because Samson is the one who has been trying to uncover what's going on and to expose it. But as we get further into the book, we realize that there are links to Adarin in this plot. And so that ups the stakes a little bit. I had a really good time reading this. It's a really fun series. I love the characters. And I like that we got to spend more time with Samson, who we'd met in the first book. And Adarin was just an absolute firecracker of a character. I absolutely loved her. Both of them are very cocky and competitive and they are just the ideal match for each other. And I loved it. I also read a Patreon short from Katie Robert. This was Wicked Villains Ladies Night Out. This was just a really short story about the women from Wicked Villains having a night out. And then they discovered that one of their kids, so this is where in second gen, so their kids are in their late teens now, and they discovered that a guy has been playing two of their daughters. And so they decide to teach him a lesson and torch his car. I mean, I don't advocate for that in reality, but that it, it, it sort of fit with the characters who are involved in this. And my favorite part about it is Meg, who is one of my favorite heroines from the Wicked Villain series, standing back and filming the whole thing, but also they're all talking about their kids and she's like, yeah. There's a reason why I don't have kids, I'm like relatable. I kicked off my Queer Lit Readathon TBR with Finna by Nino Cipri. This was a novella. It is a story about a customer who goes missing from a big box furniture store a la Ikea. It's, you know, a knockoff Swedish home store. And two employees, the two most recent hires for the company, are sent through a wormhole to try and retrieve this customer because this furniture store basically is a gateway to the multiverse. And so these two characters who were previously in a relationship with one another have recently broken up, have to try and track through some very strange multiverse versions of this store where most things try to kill them to track down this wayward customer and then return her to their world. There is a lot of weirdness along the way and it was an entertaining read. It's only just over a hundred pages long and was quite entertaining. And then the last book that I read this week was Conspiracy of Dragons by Louisa Masters. This is the fourth book in the Hebe Dragon series. I don't know if we're getting more in this series, maybe, but we could also have wrapped up. So for anyone who hasn't heard me talk about the Hebe Dragon series before, it is a spin-off of another series called the Hidden Species series. Shifters and magical beings and demons exist, in, uh, exist on Earth, but most humans are not aware of it and they have this sort of hidden government. In the previous series, the Fae and dragons ended up on Earth after their planet was destroyed. And so 
they've had to make a new life on Earth and we've been following the dragons in the Hibby Dragon series. So in this case, we are following Stefan, who is the head of security for the dragons. And he had a very rough upbringing and that has affected his life. And he is deeply paranoid about many things, makes him a great head of security because he's constantly thinking about, thinking about what's going to go wrong and how to fix it. Also on the flip side, it makes him take extreme measures and he has to be talked down from a lot of them a lot of the time. Although there's a really funny moment at the start of the book where he intentionally gives his boss, who is the leader of the dragons, a suggestion for something that is really extreme. And in his head, he's thinking, now I know he's gonna turn this down, but he's gonna turn this down. And then when I give him another alternative, he's probably gonna accept it because it's not the extreme version. So he's like, he's very aware of the way that his brain works and the way that people perceive him, but he still struggles with that paranoia. And throughout the series, he is constantly thinking of conspiracy theories against everyone. But as it turns out, he has been in a secret relationship with his second in command for thousands of years. And he's just very reluctant to make it public because he doesn't want Will to be used against him or for Will to be targeted because of him. And there is an incursion within their government organization. And Stefan is working on that as well as another project that is just causing him a huge amount of stress. And it's Will and Stefan working through their relationship. It is Stefan being hit with some very unexpected news that he doesn't just, he just doesn't know how to deal with. And all of the dragons trying to come together and deal with the reality of Stefan's past, which comes up and many people didn't know about. So it's just really fun, very enjoyable. There's no third act breakup. It's just very cozy paranormal romance and I had a great time reading it. Those are the books that I have read in the last week in the comments. I'd love to know if you've read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up. Feel free to share something that you have been reading and loving in the past week or leave me a dragon emoji if you just want to let me know that you're here. I hope that wherever you are in the world you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.